you. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. My name is Chris Brown, I'm the marketing manager with the Dev Cycling MC, but I'm not going to be talking today about Amsterdam, but Austin, Texas, which is a fairly unlikely uh, but inspiring place uh, to learn about a city that's transforming itself uh, in a very short period of time. If you already know the Upcycling Embassy, we're a public-private partnership. Uh, it was initiated by the national government in the Netherlands about 10 years ago. Uh, we work with cities all around the world to implement best practice from the Netherlands, uh, drawn from our network of uh, over 100 organizations. If you'd like to more, know more, you can't miss, of course, the Upcycling Pavilion. Austin uh, is, was a unique challenge uh, for us. Uh, of course, very different from the, the context of the Netherlands. Uh, almost the same, comparably, in terms of population to Greater Amsterdam, uh, with a third uh, or three times the geographic area. So a third of the density uh, we're working with, and obviously much greater car use. Uh, but it's not to say that we can't apply uh, Dutch principles and best practices even to uh, a sprawling southern city uh, in the heart of Texas, and that's exactly what we did. It started out with the uh, I think back workshop in 2012 with three uh, Dutch experts that we sent to Texas. One of them is in the room, Richard. Uh, good morning. Uh, and uh, yeah, working with the local planners on uh, their specific challenges uh, and hoping, hopefully, teaching them a thing or two. And they came away from this workshop with three uh, moments that I will uh, share with you this morning. The first was to invest where the short trips are. And uh, even in a sprawling city like Austin, 50% of the car journeys are under five kilometers, perfectly cyclable with the right infrastructure in place. They were able to model uh, those short, short car journeys using traffic modeling software and create a heat map where those short car journeys were concentrated, which would inform uh, their cycling infrastructure investments. The second uh, moment was to use cycling to feed transit. This is something the Netherlands obviously does remarkably well with their rail uh, bike system, uh, but it's not to say it can't be also used for the buses and now the light rail system in Austin in terms of feeding more passengers into the system and inducing more cycling uh, as a result of their public transport investments. The third uh, moment uh, was that you can't plan for cycling without planning for all modes. This sounds very intuitive, but the fact is that it was still very siloed in our planning. And it's something, again, that the Dutch do remarkably well is untangling their car network from their bike network, but also planning their bike network in coordination with their public transportation network and looking at the city uh, in a more holistic way rather uh, than working in our individual areas. A lot of this work that came out of the workshop fed into a 2014 uh, bicycle master plan that the city of Austin developed. 650 kilometers of fully uh, separated cycling routes uh, that have to be built by 2025. Uh, and again, they use that heat map of the short car journeys uh, to really uh, concentrate where those uh, routes would be made. There was a large, significant strategic uh, shift that happened within this bicycle master plan. They were no longer serving existing cyclists, but they were using cycling as a tool uh, to increase the quality of life in Austin. Uh, and this was a story that they had to share because they had to go to the public uh, for a mobility bond uh, and ask for a, uh, uh, money to fund this uh, program. Uh, it was also a political exercise, so it started with seven visits to the Netherlands. The mayor and several councillors came and rode, rode a bike in several Dutch cities. They had the opportunities to go to Seville or Vancouver or other cities, but they chose the Netherlands as their North Star, as they called it, uh, because that was the bar they wanted to set in terms of the quality of their cycling infrastructure. So 137 million, they had to go to the public and ask for a vote on. Uh, again, the story of improving quality of life by reducing uh, those short car journeys. Uh, pleased to say that it passed with 59% approval. Uh, and with that 137 million for walking, cycling, and safe streets investments, uh, they were able to get rolling on this network uh, and start putting infrastructure on the ground. The first of which is the third street uh, bikeway in the heart of Texas, heart of Austin. Uh, it's really something to see these red tinted. Uh, separate cycle paths they used specifically chose for that despite the, the North American standard being green uh, as a little homage to the uh, Pink Bike Workshop and the roots uh, that came out of the, the inspiration for this plan. And it's not just the city center, it's the suburbs of Austin that are also uh, investing in this infrastructure. This is a, uh, well, a, a form of a protected intersection, even though the stop sign there. And uh, uh, yeah, it's actually uh, applied quite well uh, on an bike directional cycle path. Uh, in a more uh, suburban context. So, uh, fast forward to the pandemic in, in 2020, uh, it, it made a lot of progress in Austin uh, through that period of time, the most prominent of which was Commerce Avenue, a major north-south route through the center of the city from the Colorado River to the 
the national or sorry, the state capitol building. Uh, and the staff were given uh, the opportunity to build a pop-up bike lane in two weeks. Uh, and they did that very quickly. They will later be made permanent. And the second is it's continued to come from to the Netherlands uh, almost on an annual basis. Again, it's a political tool. Uh, but perhaps the most inspiring is to see kids, city councilors go back to their communities uh, with newfound enthusiasm. Even the fire chief uh, of Austin uh, came to Rotterdam, sat down with his counterpart, uh, and suddenly uh, found them to be an ally in terms of designing this infrastructure. We were lucky enough to go back with Richard and others. He's a little bit greater 10 years later. Uh, but we uh, celebrated what had been accomplished in the last 10 years. It was quite a special achievement going from city council, uh, but also detouring for the next few years because there's still uh, a lot of progress that needs to be made. So yeah, there's the, the numbers, 380 kilometers of the 650 have been built, uh, 16 protected intersections, uh, they're now accelerating the program, so the remaining of the 650 kilometers should be finished by 2025 uh, with a new uh, mobility bond that was passed in 2020 with 67% uh, approval from the voters. Uh, and this is now the next level of infrastructure that's being built. It was just, uh, well, the concrete was still wet when we were there for the workshop through the University of Texas uh, in Austin. Uh, and another nice red tinted uh, asphalt cycle path that again continues through the intersections. Uh, it gives the students there a nice uh, option in terms of moving around the campus. Looking at Congress Avenue on the left here, there, as I said, uh, it's going from a six lane route to a four lane uh, with a more permanent investment in uh, expanding the walking cycling space and a really kind of inspiring uh, cycle bridge, uh, kind of inspired by the Hogan Ring, a, a triangular shape over the Colorado River uh, that will tie together through the cycling routes there. The funding again has been approved and uh, things are Looking right in Austin. So, if you'd like to learn more, yeah, I'll be out in the Dutch uh, Cycle Pavilion all afternoon. Uh, but please do get in touch at our website. Um, next time we start talking about the Netherlands, uh, if you hear while well, we're on Amsterdam, uh, perhaps you can uh, ask them if uh, they'd like to be.